I welcome the three of you, and I really would like to just have you go around the room and give your first name. This is going to be a small, intimate session. So, those are the best. Those are the best, right? You can do a lot of sharing. If you want to tell what, where you're at in life and what you're doing, that's fine, but you don't have to. You can just give your name and whatever. So, who wants to start first? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm Danielle. I'm from Spring Arbor University. I am uh, now currently a senior there, <laughs> and um, I'll still teach in the spring. So, um, but I'm majoring in early childhood education. Okay. Great. I'm um, Penny Lucy. I teach at Hanover Oregon. Can be our teacher, but I'm 27 years. So she's okay. Okay. So. Well, nice to have you, Penny. And I'm Matt, and I'm a retired teacher. I taught at Northwest for 20 years, and before that I taught. Um, but I've been retired for 12 years, and I still miss it. So I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. I do. I, I like retirement. I'm not saying I don't like retirement, but I used to, because I was kind of shocked. I'm going to tell you a little story that I talked to some other retired teachers to see if they wanted to come today. And I was excited about this, but of course my son's in both of them, so. And they said, no, we're not teaching anymore. And I said, are you dead? And they said, no. And they said, well, you can learn something even if you retire, you know. And I still do teach crafts and stuff to adults now. So I still have my hand in teaching. But once a teacher, always a teacher. You take that with you. It's in your later. heart. It's oh, in your house. Yes. yes. OK. Mackenzie, you introduced yourself. She's a teacher here, ready to transfer. Okay, I'd like to introduce two people that are going to be working with you. Your students at Jackson Community College, and actually, Robert is at Spring Arbor University. Um, he does SI work here at um, Student Supplemental Instruction here at Jackson Community College in the math area, and is still very much in part. The other part I'd like to share about Robert briefly is that he held with me, um, I was the national president for the uh, National Association for community colleges and teacher education preparation. And um, Robert was um, our selected candidate to represent nationally on our board. So for a student board, what we, our national board, he was the student representative. So Robert and I know each other in a lot, a lot of different capacities. And then this is Sarah Mead. Um, she is a math education major here. And not quite sure where she's gonna transfer to yet, but she'll figure that out as we all have in life, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so one of the things, um, I grabbed these, and I haven't used them in my classroom, but I've used them in presentations, is that one of the things I really like are visuals and hands-on. So I'm gonna share this with you because I wear these in elementary classrooms because I feel like math is money. Would any of you disagree? No. Okay, now, because we have this whole surge in here of what happens with math and you know, people the way they feel about it and think about it, so on and so forth. So, you know, I have, whoa, I have a lot of dollar store kind of gimmicks, but, you know, of course, students love these little things. And this fits in right with multiple intelligences. So, um, one thing that I'm going to share lightly, because this is a small group, I would never, ever, ever teach in a lecture hall. I will teach out on green grass before I teach in a lecture hall. So when I read, finally read the details. I said, Steve, you put me in a lecture hall? You're kidding. I thought, we'll make it work, because teachers have to make it work no matter where they're at. So we're making it work. Um, now, here's um, part of a presentation. We're not going to talk about all of it, partly because of time, but also because I just want you to know that I have a different life and do different things, too, is that uh, Dr. Jim Scott and I um, teach instructional skills workshop, and one of the things that we do is we talk about multiple intelligences. And if there's any area that means MI is math and science. When I talk to the National Science Foundation in Washington, they're going, if we could just get math and science teachers to understand how this is really participatory learning. Now, I'm not going to go through the goals because you'll feel those as we go on. Okay, now I know some of my students know what the eight MIs are, but let's just all help each other. So what are some of the eight multiple intelligences? Let's list them off. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you know anything, Sam, about MIs? No. Do you want to guess? What is one of your intelligences, one of your strengths? 
I don't know. You have one. Yeah, yeah. I okay. know. Just say it. You're displaying one, working with the camera. Yeah. Okay. Is it photography? Sort of? Yeah. Okay, you're visual. All right. So that's a, that's a strength. Not everybody can do what you're doing. And anybody in here in this room admit that they are really not good at, at with cameras? Okay, maybe not in this room. But there are some people, trust me, that cannot handle a camera. Okay, what's another one? Kinesthetic. Okay, kinesthetic. That interpersonal. Interpersonal, which is, do you remember what that is? Inter? Um, is it yourself or the, that That's one's other? intra. 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 So inter is with others. Okay, what's the okay. Music? music? Okay, musical, rhythmical. What else? I work well with the groups, so that interpersonal. interpersonal. Yes, yeah. you are very interpersonal. What else? Sarah does really well. This is what she's going to teach. Mathematical. Okay, mathematical, logical, Art. visual, spatial. Okay, we're going to, I just wanted to see if you knew these, but we're not going to spend much more time on this. Okay, then there's some visions of multiple intelligences, and then we're going to briefly talk about maybe after we have our lessons some good teaching methodologies. Okay, now we know, especially in the math and science area, that it's important for students to find their gifts. I say all students have gifts, and we need to help them discover those, no matter what they are. Many, many students don't realize they have gifts in math and science for many reasons they don't understand that. And so, let's talk about helping uh, learning um, some of the great people that have gifts. One of the things that I've discovered early on is that when we help students to learn their gifts, they're willing to try anything if they feel good about one thing. So I'm just gonna pop up here some um, various uh, famous people. Now does anybody know what Rodin did? He was a sculpture, right? And you'll see one of his pieces in just a minute. The thinker. Yes, the thinker. And he was, um, he had a major learning disability. Does anybody know any other famous people, before I show you some more, who had some um, problems but were famous? Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein? Edison. Okay, Thomas Edison. Anybody know anybody else? Okay, this is helpful for those students who think that maybe if they do have a disability of sort. Um, Admiral Perry, he was strong in body kinesthetic. Schumann was emotionally disturbed, but very musically rhythmical. Okay, Nelson Rockefeller had a learning disability. He was great, obviously, and it really helped him with um, interpersonal relationships. George Patton had another he had a learning disability. Intrapersonal. Okay, Beethoven was hearing impaired. Musical. Edgar Allan Poe had a lot of emotional problems, very verbal linguistic, and of course, um, Sears already mentioned Albert Einstein, very strong in mathematical, um, rhythmical, or oh, er, mathematical. Now, what I'd like you to do is hold your hands together like this. Okay, what we know by using multiple intelligence with, with our students is that we're hopefully sharpening the gap. Okay, we're here, and we want to bring our students here. So we're shortening that gap. And what I'm trying to have you feel is that by going through those avenues, it really, really does make a difference. And where's my whole room here? Okay, some of you saw this ahead of time. I would like to think that our brain has that opportunity. Now some children are in classrooms or some adults and their brains are sort of closed. But as we open our brain up to all these eight avenues, we make a lot more connections to things. And this is called the Hoberman sphere. It's a very strong sphere developed by architect, artist, and it's also used in mathematical worlds. So if I'm musical rhythmical and the teacher helps me this way, it also helps me to open up some of these paths to other ways. So instead of feeling like maybe I'm here and not getting it, I open up more. Okay, that's, there's, 
there's lots of controversy around multiple intelligences, but I've seen it, a lot of good become it. So, where we want in education is to kind of shorten that gap between what you're teaching and what the students are learning. Okay, now, we, I've already mentioned the learning gap. Okay, now, a couple other things that I'd like to mention is that um, our capacity. How, anybody know the percentage of what capacity? Now, I mentioned this in my class, so I should just call the two people here. What capacity of our brain is actually used in our lifetime? Anybody remember? Less than that. Less than that. Smaller than that? Really? We use what? Five percent? A little less than that. We use around three to three and a half percent potential of our brain. Now, a, a psychologist was talking to me about this and said, Mary, so she came up to me like this. She goes, So, Mary, why aren't you using your potential? I'm going, uh, I'm working at it. I'm working at it. <laughs> So, you want to be able to learn German, and you want to be able to learn Spanish, and you want to be like, why aren't you doing it? Oh, well, because a lot of it is our choices. So, we, we really, we know, you're in the classroom, Penny, but you've got kindergartners. I taught high school for years. Motivation has to enter into this whole capacity thing. So, I want, we really want to try to motivate the learner to use every capacity they have. So, let's take... Um, the brain here and your essential multiple uh, intelligences. Now, we're going to say this aloud. And so, you, even teaching crafts, the more ways I teach, the more students I reach. Okay, let's say this all together. I know my students have heard this. The more ways I teach, the more students I reach. And sometimes, what's uncomfortable for us is very comfortable for our learners. So over here is a little self-check sheet on the 8 and I should welcome to pick this up when you leave. You know, and it kind of is a grid on how do I teach as a teacher? Because oftentimes the students who work with us best are learning the way we like to learn best. We know that from, you know, we sometimes have to push ourselves to, to teach in different ways. Okay, there's your brain. Now, yeah. watching our time. I don't think that people put students in a box, and they think <clears throat> we refer to students, we see children, but I'm dealing with adults, and they're still students. Mm -hmm. I'm an old lady, and I'm still a student, I'm right. still learning. So the word student is often deceiving. It's a lifelong process. Yeah. We're all students, every one of us. And I hope that I'm a student until, yeah, I hope I'm a student as long as I live. Because I think that keeps us, our minds, so engaged and so powerful. Well, look at all the research on Alzheimer's. The people who are almost forgotten about being learners are the ones who seem to have the most trouble. So, um, and I follow that very closely based on this. Okay, first of all, we know that if you use multiple intelligences, it increases learning. And you'll see this in just a minute through a couple experiences you're going to have. It can help but increase the level. Okay, it also increases intelligence. Now, our IQ doesn't change a whole lot. It can be bumped up a little bit. Actually, our EQ can be changed a whole lot. We're not going to spend any time on EQ today. But I've been doing a lot of research in the EQ area. So we can adjust our IQ a little bit. But our emotional quotient can really grow, and it gives us power when we have that opportunity to do what we enjoy doing most. Okay, I know for a fact, because I've taught all types of students, the more opportunities and different types of learning experiences it reduces behavioral problems. I can guarantee it. I've seen it over and over and over again. Um, just from some of the, um, tough students I've worked with. Okay, and it sure makes learning more fun, and it increases student success. Okay, now, you, we've reviewed these already. Here's verbal linguistic, 
logical mathematical body kinesthetic rhythmic rhythmic musical by the way those of you who are in here today all these things are going to be uh, posted on a wiki so you won't have any trouble accessing stuff so you know, really I mean I I know um, Penny's taking notes and I will be taking notes too because that's one of the ways I connect with my brain but some people just can listen and assimilate so okay visual spatial the naturalist um, intrapersonal and interpersonal. A little side note about the naturalist. Our, the generation after mine, we're seeing a huge deprivation in the naturalist. Huge. We have, well Steve, uh, um, not Steve Tucky, but Steve Alby Scott teaches an environmental science class where if I was here as, as a student, I would have been so excited about going outside every day as a live classroom. They can get students to go outside. Now, it's amazing to me. We don't have, we, you know, where are our students? They're in the house. We walk up and down the streets. We don't see children outside much. Sarah happens to live in Springport, where the environmental areas are really, really important. How about your family's welfare? Okay. Now, we are going to have, and this is, I'm putting a little plug in, um, we're starting in the fall, a nature preschool in this community will be the first, keep this in mind, um, will be one of three in Michigan. And Michigan is a natural state. I mean, it's our natural environment. So I've been helping with this because I'm such a naturalist at heart. And it's going to start its first year at the Career Center. Because the Down Center feels we shouldn't build the building until we make sure we have, you know, support for one of these. But um, there's a huge, um, as a lot of research is going to, so we're going to be having a nature preschool in our community. And it will be a leading preschool, um, and we're hoping we can build it right on site at the Down Center in a couple of years as soon as we get the revenue and the fall. But we have um, several people already registered for fall. And we've hired a fabulous woman to be the director. So she's done a lot of nature preschool work, and she's actually from out of state. And she's, her husband had moved to Jackson, and now she has a job in Jackson area too. So we know across the country this naturalist needs to be nurtured so that our environment maintains its beauty. Because if we don't have anybody who cares, it's going to be a problem. Okay. So let's take a look at visual space, spatial. Many of my students are visual spatial. If you have people that come for crafts, they're very visual spatial. And you can do crafts. Okay, so they see the world in terms of shapes and sizes. Okay, you can see right here some of the things they like to do. Now, we know lots of great people that are visual spatial. And if we don't have that in our world, it would look pretty bland. Okay, um, a friend of mine actually did a lot of this PowerPoint, Jim. He goes, this is you, Mary. It is not me. <laughs> Sees the world's through, <coughs> I corrected this here. Sees the world, the world through words. I don't know why that is. Okay, and language. Okay, now, uh, obviously our poets, so on and so forth. Schools are built around our verbal, linguistic, and mathematical, logical. Sad to say. Any of you that are going to be teaching, well, you guys are math. Are you, you're not, are, what, what's your strength here? Do you remember? I am more visual spatial. Okay. So and you're going into preschool? Yes. Okay. Do you know what your strength might be? Sorry, visual and auditory. Visual and auditory. I can see okay. Okay, and so where do these people gravitate in our educational system? And I was just talking to a musician just two hours ago who said, Mary, we have young people in music who don't, they don't want to listen to music before they play. They just want to watch it with entertaining background. I said, my gosh, this is, I, and he's a renowned musician. I thought, no, how can we get children to learn to play music if all they're interested is watching the video? I thought this is a whole area that should be tapped into. Okay, body kinesthetic. Through, you're going to feel this in a minute through 
all kinds of ways of moving. Okay, musical rhythmical, through music and rhythm. We have a generation right now that that's really, really important, music and rhythm. So we have to tap into that, and um, it really does help to understand. Okay, it accelerates learning all, in many, many ways. I know I'm moving quickly, but I have to. Um, sees the world through nature. Okay, anybody in here besides me a naturalist? I, I feel like I'm always alone. You might be a little bit. What, tell me what you like to do. Science. Okay, what about science? What areas of science? Biology. Okay. A lot of biologists are naturalists. You're absolutely right. So you've had probably had Laura Thurlow? No. Okay. Because she's really a big naturalist, too. We compare a lot about how much we both love working in the garden and outside and doing anything outside. Yeah. So um, I keep searching for the naturalist in this world. In fact, when I come on campus, I just want to start weeding and cleaning the gardens. And then the custodian says, Mary, we need a job. And I say, okay, I won't do this anymore. Because I used to come and do that. Um, logical mathematical sees the world through numbers and sequences. OK, now, you two are logical mathematical. Sam, you're science. Anybody else in here logical? You're, yeah. You are. Mm -hmm. My husband is logical mathematical. And they see in who teaches the logical mathematical? Logical mathematical. So all those people who are not strong logical and mathematical are going, really? We don't think like that. And we have to help the logical mathematical, including my husband, to understand that. Are the logical mathematical in a musical principles? In your daughter in law's case, yes. And, and they the are very. I don't know if you realize that, but Steve was very musical. No, I didn't know that. Um, I know he has a zillion talents, but I didn't know about the music part. Um, the logical mathematical music are very, very close. They say usually musicians are good math people. Right? And I will That's agree with you. That's not always true. That's not always no. true. It's not always true. But we know that children learn music easier when they have that um, they have that logical mind. Right. They, they really do. But we're not in music. When you guys were in, who in elementary school had the opportunity to every to learn music? I mean, okay. We have, that's being, that's being cut right now in the schools, in many schools, right? And we have to have, if we're going to help children to see some of those patterns, we have to have some other way other than just numbers in math. So it's, um, in fact, and then if you don't have any, anything to do, I keep telling my students this, if one, anybody, we are in desperate need of a math textbook based on music experiences. You would make zillions. Mackenzie. Um, in elementary school, we actually learned our times tables through songs. Okay. Like, you had to repeat the songs. Yeah, yeah I got that CD up here. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, one of the CDs for songs. But I keep telling it's students, it's students mm -hmm. if somebody could develop a math textbook with the, the underpinnings of art and music, it would be a bestseller instantly if it if it really, you know, was. That's a lot of kids for aging younger, or not younger, maybe a little older, how they learn the states and the capitals. That song. Song. Yes. That's how I learned. Because yeah. my daughter came home from the song. <laughs> what song. Why did I know that song when I was your age? Right. Yeah, that's okay. So things to do. Okay, here's our Rogaine, or Rogaine, Rogaine. <laughs> okay, here's our famous artist here, intrapersonal within oneself. Okay, that's something that I always think is really helpful. You're setting goals interpersonal. Robert mentioned he's very strong in that. Okay, and sees the world relating to others. Okay, and then what we know is being discussed, and Dan Goldman's work in emotional intelligence is just phenomenal, is emotional intelligence, mechanical, and culinary. Now, these are being researched, but I'm letting you know the reason why um, Howard Gardner has not actually come out with more 
is because many people argue with him all the time that they overlap with some of the others. So I think too, because he's kind of almost come full circle, a new leader will have to come and say, what else? There's some, a few more on the horizon, but we won't spend time with that today. So it's um, really, really helpful because, for example, I mean, some of you could say, if you're, anybody in here a good cook? Okay, and that you are, okay, you know you have to have some visual spatial. But I taught a lot of math by cooking. I taught a lot of science by cooking. There you go. So, it's just really helpful. Okay, now, um, here's some four elements I'd like you to remember. Okay, I don't care how well you go into a classroom to incorporate these. You have to have a healthy climate. That trust has to be there. We really, really have to have in order to facilitate learning. And um, it just is so, so important. And I think, you know, Penny, you're in, in um, the Hannibal Horton schools, but some of my students work in, you know, McCulloch Elementary or at Parkside or even the bigger districts northwest. And that community is so vital. I mean, I think Hannibal Horton has this natural built in community sense. The community always supports us and goes, you know, gun home for us. Right. All the time. And the bigger the district, or the less, I would say, there's a lot of pieces that go into that community. But um, it's really, we see that community so necessary in the classroom in many, many places. Okay, so. Okay, so. Um, one of the things that is, we're not going to take the time is um, the ET phone home is that in order to make those connections. So we have to make that. And then I'd like to mention to you two, if we hold our hands together like this. OK. And then we go apart like this. OK. Less is more. And I think you have always been teaching. Mm -hmm. But remember when we had to do more in education? Mm -hmm. And now when we focus on less, I'm sure you've heard that mm -hmm. when you're in your student teaching. Less and deeper. Really, really helpful. Very, very helpful in the learning process. Okay. Help students to process. Okay. So we have a little bit of wheat there. And I'm sure reaps a huge bountiful. And then, of course, the spaced repetition, which we're going to see in just a minute. And um, we know that we're done here. Very few people can sit more effectively for 20 to 30 minutes. I say 10. So we are going to have two short 10-minute lessons. And they are going to include the multiple intelligences. And you get to participate. And the lessons are up here, plus another lesson that Sarah brought to my attention. It's um, she works as a volunteer over at McCulloch Elementary School, even though she's going into secondary math. But the beauty of that is some of the things she's learning with those elementary students, she'll be able to use the same thing on high school since it's a really fun math type of activity. So we have um, all the lessons here, and then here's an MI planning sheet that you're welcome to pick up. And then over here are some things, the one about teachers and multiple intelligences and a little bit about our teacher education program. So the first person to share a lesson with, and all of you are going to be active now. So you ready? Okay. You got to turn your brains on real quick here. Okay. Robert is going to work a little bit on a high school math experience. Watch the panic sit in. I know. I love to watch when I say high school math and they're going, oh yeah. Oh, you're right. Okay. So do you have a thumb drive ready to go? Um, no, actually I won't need it. Okay. So since we got a small group, we'll keep this nice and cozy. Having some fun. Okay. All right. So, um, do you guys like pie? Who mm -hmm. likes pie? What's your guys' favorite pie? Me, my favorite is like cherry. Mm -hmm. Cherry pie, pumpkin pie, is good too. Oh, that's good. What do you have? Here, these space Who made? Oh, I like cherry. Ever <laughs> city cherries? Oh yes. Rhubarb. I will participate. Is that right? Yeah, because I love this lesson. Excellent. Okay. 
I think they need some pencil. We have pencils yes. here for you. What'd you say? You're I haven't. What? Yeah, I don't know. Can I see the lesson? Yeah, leave them fingers. Oh, face on the back of the room. No, I'm not going to get it. Okay, you need a pencil. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we have one, two, three. Excellent. We'll have six people. Well, today we are going to talk about the unit circle, also called the pie chart. So I'm glad to ask you about the pie. Um, anybody familiar with the pie chart? Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> but we, we have seen it, kind of know what it is, what, what it, what's about it. Okay, so we're not totally in the dark. We, we know. Okay. Um, we're just going to start this out. There's many pieces to it. So basically today I just wanted to, uh, my objective is just to get you to see like the symmetry that goes with it and then we'll you know, go deeper into it and by the end we'll have it all memorized and ready to go, getting ready for that trick oh. I'm talking about. <laughs> so, okay, um, I'll give you about a minute, flip over this paper and fill in as much as you can. And if you can't fill out anything, that is perfectly fine, because this is what we're going to go through, is this whole thing. So, <laughs> so there's no oh, worries, because okay. we're going to review that whole thing. You're so. very successful, because you didn't teach me something. <laughs> Positive. This one? Excellent. And the final one? Positive, negative. Exactly. It's important to keep track of like uh, which way because we know the X goes first, right? Mm -hmm. And when we discuss that. So if we're starting out at zero here, if we're going here, positive, positive. Here we would go negative first, and then we'd be up in this section, so it'd be positive, negative, negative, 
Here we're going positive, but then we're going negative afterwards. So, If you can see this metal line, right? See how that's right in the center? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when looking at these, the way that they measure them is they're doing it by a triangle. And this one is even. So it's the same distance, the two sides. Therefore, well, my square root side is not very good. <laughs> The x and the y coordinate are the same measurement. And be a square root of 2 over 2. Now, if I was to give you, say, look at this one, would you say the x is bigger or the y is bigger? X. And the x. That's the measurement. Okay. So we have the. Oh. Do you see how this one's bigger? Yeah. Square roots of three over two is going to be bigger than one half. So by giving you that, what would you say that this one is? If they're all equal as far as the pieces. One half comma square root of three over two. Excellent. Because. Which part? Which you guys piece, can answer. Which piece is bigger? You lost and put the circle. So which piece is bigger? The Y, right? Mm -hmm. The horizontal or horizontal? Vertical. <laughs> okay, we love that one. Now, when we were talking about the symmetry, right? The circle is broke up into the same way in all these pieces which we'll go through the radians and everything, but right now I just want you guys to focus on those measurements. So if we know that what the positive and the negative numbers are in each coordinate, we should be able to fill out the rest of them, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Thanks, Dave. fill out coordinate. Here. You are? <laughs> Remember, signs are important. Just one of these lines? Mm -hmm. Just like I filled in here. But I don't want one of those. Okay. Okay, why'd you give it those numbers? Explain to me why you're doing what you're doing too, why you're doing it. Oh.
Okay, so quick review, um, because the bell's about to ring and we're about to get out of here and we'll finish up next session then. So, <laughs> um, so the symmetry, if you can see this, we can fill in all of these pieces because they're all going to be the same numbers, just reflected. So the only thing that's going to change is the positive and negatives. All right, so coming in next week, we are going to, we're going to give you another empty sheet. See what you guys recall. So if you can, keep these studies warm. Thank you for your time. Great. Thanks, Robert. You're okay, now, Sarah is, um, has uh, her quick 10 minute lesson. It's going to be, you'll see, much, much different, but still very active. Okay. All right. Ready? I, I'll participate too because you're going to need, yeah. Well, let's see. Are you okay? Yes. Yeah, Ready? Yeah. I can or I cannot. Okay. 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 You want to? Do you need me? Do you need me? Yeah, for six probably. We can do three and three. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Robert, I don't think so because in that, she's going to be in, um, or she can't be mobile. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. So we'll do just okay. four then? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, everyone. I hope we're all having a good day today and enjoying the conference. Um, I wish I would like everyone that um, is able to you know, bring it down to come up here and stand shoulder to shoulder, please. Okay. Don't worry, Penny. I would not leave you down the wrong path. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Uh, just give yourself enough room to where you can kind of lift your arms up. Yeah. Yeah. Shoulder to shoulder. Again, maybe in a straight line is facing up. She's facing the camera. Oh. Uh, <laughs> be ready. This is so make sure we get a good shot. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, the bike don't have pictures. Okay. Is everyone ready? Turn the ringer on. What are we doing? <laughs> Turn it off. Turn it off. Vibrate. Maybe that's why it's not playing. No, it. Um, she has trouble could. sometimes with this service yeah. on her cell phone. I have no service anymore. Really? Well, it was no. playing earlier. Is the thing. So. Did you just see any kind of music? No. Mine was going through on my phone. It was? Yeah, I have full service. Uh, yeah, it's probably your phone. Yeah. I'm going to have trouble getting anything here. Maybe this is rigged like this. The students, the students can't use their cell phones during class time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, wonder, I, wonder, I wonder if it's streaming <laughs> or something you're doing. Yeah. All right. It's loading. Okay. And I had it loaded before, but it's okay. Yeah. You have to be patient, right?